Okay, so we have a load, uh, 20 minus J35, and then we have a uh, transmission line here. And this transmission line section is 0.7 lambda long. Okay, and this is a transmission line with a characteristic impedance Z naught. So uh, using the Z axis, the load is always Z equals zero. And then, um, and then as we travel on the transmission line, Z gets negative. So here we're at minus 0.7 lambda. Now of course L gets positive, so L is equal to 0.7 lambda. Okay, and so looking in here, um, we see ZL and we see gamma L, right? And then looking in here, after the transmission line section, I say that we are we have an impedance of Z in. Uh, we see an impedance of Z in or the reflection coefficient uh, gamma in. And, and then we also have some incident voltage equal to V naught plus. Okay, which is, which is going at the circuit. Okay. So the first question asks, um, what is the voltage V naught plus? And this is an equation that I would recommend you have in your notes and that you can easily access. We found that V naught plus at generator okay, is equal to um, so V naught plus is equal to VG, the generator voltage, times Z naught divided by Z naught plus ZG multiplied by 1 divided by 1 minus gamma L times gamma G times E to the minus J beta L. ZG, our generator impedance, is equal to Z naught. Gamma G is zero. Because remember, gamma G is the reflection coefficient uh, looking into the generator. Okay, and you have a match between your, your transmission <coughs> line and your generator impedance. So at this, um, at this interface here, you don't have a reflection. And so gamma G is zero. And, and I worked through where um, I, I pointed out that for this special case, when gamma G is equal to zero, we have a very simple, uh, V naught just simplifies to, V naught plus simplifies to VG times one half, right? Because this, go, this goes away, this is just one over one, and then this becomes a half. <coughs> And so this was a, a conclusion for, for that special case when, um, when you have a generator that's matched to the line. Okay, so you should know that whenever you have a generator that's matched to your transmission line, independent of the load, it doesn't matter what the load impedance is, you know that V naught plus is going to be half the generator voltage, okay? So from this, we know that um, V naught plus is going to be equal to one volt. So that's the answer to part one. So we know it's matched because of that Z naught resistor up to the generator? Exactly, right. So this is, typically this would be a general ZG, a, a generator impedance. In this case, it's Z naught. And this transmission line here has a characteristic impedance Z naught. So we have a match between the generator and the transmission line. Okay, and it does, in that particular case, it doesn't matter what the load impedance is. Now, in general, if you wanted to find V naught plus for any, um, for any ZG, then you would use the top equation. So 
So this, so this equation gives you everything, and, and I, would, I would know this equation, and, and then just know that it, it simplifies greatly if you have a generator that's, that's matched to your transmission line. <coughs> okay? All right, now let's go to the Smith chart. Now the normalized version of, um, of 20 minus J35 is going to be point, um, point, uh, point 0.4 um, minus, minus uh, point 0.7 J, right? Okay, so, so this is R equals 0.5 circle. Um, so R equals 0.4 is going to be somewhere here. So I'm going to go on, I'm going to find the intersection of R equals 0.4 with um, X equals minus 0.7. Okay, so that's going to be, let's say somewhere over here. Okay, so there's my, my ZL. is my x equals minus 0.4 circle. I'm sorry, minus 0.7 circle. And this is my r equals um, 0.4 circle. And that's where my zl is. All right, now gamma l, right, is a vector drawn from the origin to zl. Okay. And why don't we extend so it's a good idea to extend this. Um, to, um, to, let's find the um, let's find what gamma l is as a complex number by writing 0.6 e to the minus j 1.8. I had a 1.82. Okay, so that's that's our gamma l, and you understand. Um, that the minus 105, you can get that from the angular scale on the Smith chart. Okay, so that comes right off the Smith chart. Now we know that we're going to move by 0.7 lambda, right? And we're going to move away from our load. So which way are we going to move, clockwise or counterclockwise? Clockwise. Okay, we're going to move this way. And if I, if I move all the way around and come back to the same point, how much have I moved? Half lambda. 0.5 lambda. So I'm moving a total of 0.7 lambda. So I need to move, I need to come back to this point, right? I need to rotate all the way around, come back to the same point, and then go an additional 0.2 lambda, right? Now, it's also helpful to know, because in later questions, I'm going to be asking, uh, what is the minimum voltage and what is the maximum voltage? Um, so it's helpful to, to note your, um, your wavelength, because there's also a wavelength scale that goes around the Smith chart, right? And, and so I've noted here 0.394 lambda, that basically the line, the uh, if you if you extend this vector all the way to that angular scale, you're gonna you're gonna strike 0.394 lambda, and so from that I know that from this point, if I rotate to z equals zero point, if I rotate here, I'm gonna move 0.106 lambda. Okay, so I just know that by just simply looking at the wavelength scale that's at the outer circle on the outer, do you have a question? Are you questioning how I got this number? So if you look at your Smith chart and you extend your, your gamma vector all the way to the, to the outer circles, there's, there's a scale there that's a that's the wavelength a wave um, towards the generator scale right yeah so you just use that scale to find this delta so the 
you have to add 0.2 to it, right? Yeah, I'm not there yet. All I'm saying is that to, to travel from, um, from this point here to, what is this point, by the way? So as I'm rotating around, when I come here, in terms of my voltage, in terms of my total voltage, what is it? It's going to be my minimum total voltage, right? That's why it's an important point, and I just want to point it out right now. Does that make sense, uh, John? Yes. Yeah? Okay. So, okay, so we try point 106, but th that's not what the question is asking. So, the question is asking uh, point 0.7 lambda, so I've gotten point 0.5 lambda, and now I need to go point 0.2 more. But since from here to here is point 0.106, uh, from there to point, uh, I just need to go point 0.094 more to get point 0.2 away, right? So um, I'm just going to be very approximate here because it's, uh, I don't want to draw too much here. It's going to be confusing more, I think. So um, let's say that I'm going to find now where is... Um, so going from here to here is 0 0.094 lambda. And then going all the way around is going to be, um, I will say, 0 0.106 plus 0 0.094 equals 0 0.2 lambda. Okay? So what I've done is I've, as I've started here, that's my load. I'm going all the way around 0.5 lambda, and then I've gone 0.2 lambda more to end up here. Okay, good. And and then I can just take the magnitude of this of this gamma vector, and I can map it on this uh, line, and that is going to be my gamma in vector. So the vector is gamma in, but this point is z in, and in order to find what is z in equal to, I just have to find, well, where does it cross the closest r circle, and where does it cross the closest x circle? And did you guys actually do that? What is z in? I, I don't ask, actually, what z in is. Did anybody just get z in? Plus 0.6 J. Plus 0.6 J. Okay, good. I won't argue with that. Looks about right. What was it? Uh, 0.4 looks to me like it might be uh, 0.375 or something. Plus 0.6 J, right? You had to tell this. And the J is uh, 0.6 J, yeah. And of course, you do have to time that by 50 ohms in order to get um, the unnormalized ZN. Okay? So that's our ZN. So that was, um, so we found gamma L, gamma N, and ZN on the Smith chart, and we plotted it. Okay? Now find the magnitude of the total voltage on the line at the location z equals 0 and z equals minus 0.7 lambda. Okay. The total um, on the line. All right. Um, let me just note the, the findings. Okay, so we found that we know that V naught plus is equal to 1 volts. We also know from the Smith chart that gamma L uh, turned out to be equal to, I'm going to be a little bit more exact than 0 0.6, it doesn't matter, 0 0.59 E to the minus J 1.82. So we found that, okay, and because we're going to need um, these two values in order to find um, the voltage at any point. Now, the equation for the voltage, and there's, there's different forms of this equation, but the form that is probably most convenient for a problem like this that asks you for the, for the total voltage at different locations away from the load impedance is going to be V of Z is equal to 
and this is and from this equation the crank diagram kind of drops out okay uh, v naught plus e to the plus j beta l now, notice I'm using l here because it's a little bit more convenient because as I'm going away from the load l is becoming more positive 1 plus gamma l which we found um, might as well use the same notation gamma l multiplied by e to the minus 2j beta l. Okay, so this is a very, another very nice equation to have. Now the, the question asks what is the magnitude, right, um, the magnitude on the t-line at the 0 and at the minus 0.7 lambda. So if we take the magnitude of v of l, Uh, what what do we have here? And by the way, let's already substitute the plus one volts for V naught plus. We found V naught plus to be plus one. So what do we have left? The magnitude of one plus gamma L. Yes. The magnitude of one plus gamma L times e to the minus two J beta L. And, um, and then let's say, um, what is the magnitude of V of L equals zero? Okay, this is going to be uh, the magnitude of V plus. Sorry? You're missing the magnitude of V plus. Okay, so V naught plus, <laughs> I substitute, substituted one volt for that because we found that to be one. Oh, okay. Okay, so at L equals zero, we have one plus gamma L, which we found to be 0.59 um, E to the minus J, 1.82. And, uh, and, and this, uh, when L is zero, this is just one, okay? So there it is. That's my... Um, equation, and you can use MATLAB just to solve this, to take the absolute value <clears throat> of this term right here, 1 plus, and that, uh, I got 1.03. Okay, now, now let's look at what is the, um, the magnitude of V, L is equal to 0.7 lambda, okay? So, uh, what we're going to have is we're going to have again 1 plus gamma L, so 1 plus 0.59 times E to the minus J 1.82. But this time we're going to multiply by E to the minus 2J beta L. And we're going to have E to the minus 2J uh, beta is 2 pi over lambda. And and then we have multiplied by 0.7 lambda. No, actually, so um, one thing here that's, that's, uh, that's good to do, actually it doesn't really quite matter, uh, but we know that V of uh, L equals to 0.7 lambda is also equal to V of L equals to 0.2 lambda. Because remember, that the, that the voltage magnitude repeats every half wavelength, okay? So this is exactly, and this is, you can see that on the Smith chart, because uh, gamma goes right back around every half wavelength. So, um, so 0 0.7 lambda and 0 0.2 lambda is the same thing in terms of the reflection coefficient and in terms of the total voltage magnitude. Uh, so, so what we can say here is instead of times uh, 0.7 lambda, I can do times 0.2 lambda. And it will give me the exact same answer. Now, of course, the lambdas cancel, okay? Um, and there we have it. I can then simply use MATLAB again uh, to solve this, uh, you know, complex number operation. And I got for that point. 9.5. Okay? So I got 0.95 and 
at location minus 0.7 lambda and 1.03 at location z equals 0. The next question, where are we going to have our voltage minimum and our voltage maximum? Let's just draw a circle all the way around here. So we know that gamma is going to be rotating around the circle, right? Around, And we know exactly how much it rotates um, for this whole section of transmission line length. Right? It makes a full rotation, and then it comes back over here uh, for, for the minimum. And this is where it will be for the maximum, right? Um, OK, good. So, but now let's picture how this, the voltage, the total voltage is, is changing, because we can already kind of see it, right? Um, and we can see it by looking at, at the magnitude of VL. This is basically our crank diagram, which we're going to do work with uh, explicitly a little bit later. But um, so in order to get the total voltage, we have to add this, this gamma as it's rotating around with, to 1, and then take the total magnitude of that. Um, and so when gamma is, uh, is here, we know that this gamma is a negative gamma, so it's 1 minus, that's why it's the minimum, and then when it's here, it's 1 plus, that's why it's the maximum. And how many minimums and how many maximums are we going to encounter as we uh, travel from the load to uh, z equals minus 0.7 lambda? Two minimums and one maximum? Yeah. Yes, good. Right. So we rotate, we encounter a minimum, we encounter a maximum, and then we encounter a minimum again. Good. You already know this, so I'm just going to write this down. V min is equal to 1 minus 0.59, and that's equal to 0.41. Um, and <clears throat> volts, and that happens at Z is equal to minus 0 0.106 lambda. Minus, minus 0 0.106 lambda. This is, this is that 0 0.106 lambda. All right, V max. is equal to 1 plus 0.59 and that's equal to 1.59 this is the magnitude volts yeah this is the magnitude right um, 1.59 volts <clears throat> at z equals now this is going to happen at z equals to minus 0 0.106 lambda, and then you have to subtract 0.25 lambda from that. Because, so over here you have minus 0 0.106, but the maximum happens over here, which is quarter wavelength away. So you have to subtract an additional 0.25 lambda, and you end up at z is equal to minus 0.25. 356 and then we know that um, at z equals minus 0.7 lambda if this is let's say 1 um, we are at what do we find we are at 0.95 okay so so let's just say that this is 1 and this is our 0.95 point so we're going to start here and then we're going to end up there okay that's fine um, we know that we are start, our gamma vector is starting here, right? And we know that as we, tra we, as we travel 0 0.106 lambda, we're going to encounter a voltage minimum, right? So at z is equal to, this is a nice one, minus 0 0.106 lambda, we're going to be at a minimum. 
and at minus 0.106 minus quarter wavelength, which is uh, right about halfway here. It's point, uh, we found that point to be z equals minus 0.36 lambda. We're going to be at a maximum, correct? So we're going to be at a maximum. And our second minimum, because we know that we have two minimums and two maximums, um, our second minimum is going to be minus 0.36 lambda, minus 0.25 lambda more, which is going to be at um, minus 0.61 about lambda, which is going to be close to here. So my z equals minus 0.61 lambda is going to be another minimum. And then it's going to rise up to 0.95. So it's going to look something like that. Starts at 1.03, and then we go 0.106 lambda. So if we're on the Smith chart, we start here. Gamma starts here. And then, then we go 0 0.106 lambda, and we're at our minimum point. Then we go an additional quarter wavelength, and we're at our maximum point. Then we go another quarter wavelength and we're at our second minimum point. And then we go 0 0.094 lambda more, since this distance here is 0 0.094 lambda, and we end up at our final location, uh, which is 0 0.7 lambda away from the load. Does that make sense, how we, how we did that problem? Okay. A crate diagram. When I, when I say, when I'm talking about the, uh, the gamma vector rotating around the Smith chart, so from here to here is one, yeah. and then here is my vector, yeah. so then the, the, the sum, the vector sum is from here to here, right? So, so you are picturing that as this thing is rotating <coughs> around, that my, vol my voltage vector is, is following it, yeah. right? It's, going, it's always going from here, so it's starting from here, and then it's just following that around, following that around, following that around. That's the crank diagram. That's the crank diagram. It's just following it around. And that's exactly where, where this comes from. That's, it. that's just it right there. Um, that's what we found mathematically, basically, doing this math. Because what we are doing is we're adding um, 1 plus gamma multiplied by a phase. Okay, and, and this is that phase, 2J beta L, as it's rotating around. So, so what I should say is, um, this point right here, 1.03, is, th is the length of this vector. If you were to measure this length uh, using the Smith chart scale, you, were, you would measure 1.03. Um, and then this would be uh, 0.41, okay? And then that would be 1.59. Well, the, 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 this is easy, right? Because this is one, and we know that the that the gamma is equal to uh, point uh, four. Uh, what is it? Gamma is equal to 0.59. So, so this is just one minus 0.59. Okay, and that's one plus 0.59. So that is your your voltage. That is your voltage, and that, that is really what this uh, equation is drawing.